right. All right. So thanks everyone uh, for joining again. Uh, it's Friday. Uh, so happy Friday to everyone. Today's 100% remote edition of uh, Community Sync. Um, so we have a few kind of light topics, I think, from the, the team on our side. Uh, before we turn it over to Community Corner with Jordan, who's going to intro Chris and the team from Absolute Net. Um, we're doing some great work around internationalization, which I, I know is a hot topic for the community. So uh, let's just get things started today. Dev, if you want to kick us off with uh, your demo for some of the work you've done for CI. Yeah, sure. Okay, so good morning, everyone. I am setting my screen. Okay, so I have a quick update on uh, CI builds, which we run as part of our like build process. So for there are some like security reasons and because of which we need to implement some extra checks. So the current flow is like uh, as soon as a community member creates a PR, all our CI builds are uh, used to run. But as part of change, so if you create a PR, the builds will currently like fail at first and uh, one of like internal team members are uh, daily sometime like uh, once we uh, review the PR and like add a CI approved label after this after this so on your next push or as part of our nightly build the PRs will uh, uh, run the CI builds uh, that's a quick update on the CI process change any questions Okay, take it no, that's it, Andre. Well, no, first, I uh, I want to say thank you for working on it. That's not a question, though. Oh, yeah, so like, yeah, so even like Raywan helped me uh, writing up the Node.js script for this. Yeah, so thanks for Raywan too. Thanks, Dev. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's definitely great. So, obviously, for community members who have been contributing PRs, we are very thankful for those. We'll go through uh, the process to make sure that they are reviewed, that that label gets add by, added by a core team member, community maintainer, right? Uh, and before, uh, you know, the build process that used to kick off will kick off now. So, um, I think that's a pretty good addition to the project, especially given our, our new focus on driving uh, some community, community additional community engagement and contribution, right? Um, all right, so uh, next we have Mr. Kalkaban who has um, an update on tutorials. Uh, uh, again, another great community contribution um, that's helped with this this work, right? Cool. Thanks, Andrew. Let me share my screen. You guys see my screen? All right. Yep. All right. Yep. You're good. Yes. Cool. Uh, so for docs, we have some new tutorials. Um, you can find them here in the PWA Studio Fundamentals section. Um, this was contributed by a community member, Ross MC. He actually approached me and asked if he could contribute uh, all these topics to PWA Studio docs, and I said yes. And so he submitted a bunch of drafts for me to look at, and I've been working through them and getting them published. So these are the first couple of tutorials available right now. Um, project setup, which is a topic on how you set up a brand new project using the scaffolding tool. And the next topic is a project structure, which goes over all the different files of that newly scaffolded project and uh, you know, their significance. And the third one is a tutorial for adding a static route, such as uh, you know, a cart page or a login page or something like that that's not a Magento specific uh, or not a page that you can find in uh, Magento and so this goes over the 
the steps for creating uh, that page in your storefront. Um, are there any questions? No? Cool. Once again, I'd like to thank Ross MC for uh, contributing and submitting these, these drafts and you know, making our docs site uh, better. So. Yeah, this is, thanks. Uh, thanks, James. So this is definitely something that we see come up pretty often in, in the community Slack, questions that I, I think that uh, both I receive, uh, Mr. Zetland, I know you get a lot of questions around it, so I think these tutorials are pretty huge and we'll continue to iterate on them and improve them, right? But just giving people a better uh, starting place uh, and kind of better uh, handhold on uh, getting started with the project using scaffolding, which is obviously newer. Um, uh, I think these tutorials are going to be pretty huge as we continue to build on them. So. Uh, yeah, thanks to there, Ross out there, and thanks to James. Yep. Yeah, there's still a bunch of drafts that still need to work through, so uh, keep an eye out in this section, and uh, we'll add some more. Awesome. Okay, so I think unless uh, anyone else on the team has uh, something that they wanted to demo, uh, I think we'll kick it over to Jordan uh, for Community Corner uh, in the the meat of the meeting for today. Awesome, thanks. Corner. <laughs> Community thanks, corner. James. Graphic. Yeah, we need a graphic for this. I'm, I'm going to um, make it. Any... I'm going to make it. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Anyhow, um, yeah, so as you guys all know, uh, translations is something that's popping up every now and then on the Jira board, or the, sorry, the Bitbucket uh, GitHub board, um, but also on Slack. Um, and it turns out that a community member called Chris from AbsoluteNet has actually been working on something which he is going to demo. And if Chris, is he actually here? I don't see him I on am. the list. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. There you are, hi. Hey. So, over to you. Awesome, all right, let me try and share the right screen. All right, hopefully you're seeing VS Code and Venya. All right. Uh, so localization is obviously a bit of a tricky one. Um, the way Magento works and the way we wanted to work with PWA. Uh, so some things we needed to think about was like how do we handle GraphQL? How do we handle setting the store in the headers um, and things like caching of that in the local as well? Um, how do we handle switching stores? Uh, how do we handle routing uh, entry points for different languages, automatically setting the locale, store view, that kind of stuff? How do we handle all of our strings and phrases, translating all of that? Um, you know, how do we make it extensible as well? How do we leverage um, translations we've built already in Magento um, if we want to reuse that stuff rather than rebuilding everything? Um, and how we would want to uh, leverage that in PWA without having to uh, rebuild it and maybe installing language packs in Magento, for example. So um, how I've tackled it at the minute is by using a, let me see where it is. Um, there's something called a 18 next loader from Alienfast. So I had a look around uh, and found currently the most popular one, which hasn't got a ton of support, but it is there and supported on how to handle 18N uh, language uh, definition within Peter Way Pro uh, within React projects. Um, so I started playing around with that one. Um, so that met a few requirements where we could generate multiple um, locales uh, in multiple areas and merge them together. So how we can handle that is maybe we have a um, locale file set up in our uh, Venue UI, for example. We have a set of locales in Venue UI that we want to bring forward into our project. But then in Venue Concept, we also have our local translations we can install and manage in Venue Concept, which add on top of um, the, the parent ones. Um, and it also allows us to generate um, multiple files. So we could have a core, say a local uh, file that we've developed within our PWA, but also 
additional files which we could potentially build dynamically from our remote, right? So we could pull in translations from Magento during build and create them into a, a local file. So for example, we have some translations in, uh, in US and then we have a French translation for additional ones, but then we could also have remote translations that were pulled in. So it did require quite a few changes to uh, how it's set up, but I tried to make it in a way that's as less intrusive as possible. Um, so we're starting off in our index file. Um, we've added a, a 18N um, initiator, initiator, I guess, where we're loading in our resource files from multiple areas, say venue UI and our local resources, and we're in needing uh, an IATNN object, uh, which is then used everywhere. We are defining a um, current store view just in browser persistence at the minute, just so we can share it everywhere because we're doing this pretty early in the process. We're not using uh, hooks or anything like that. Maybe we move that to a context or something. I'm still trying to work out the best way of handling that. Uh, so that gets knitted, and then first up, we're adding the store view into our GraphQL headers. So you'll see here, our store is included automatically uh, for every GraphQL call that we're then making. So we're getting the right data back, which means content blocks, product information, all that kind of stuff is localized um, as we would expect. Uh, and then on top of that, I've created a use localization hook, uh, which handles storing um, of the locale and store view. Uh, it handles switching of the language and it exposes a translate function, which leverages 18N for translate, but I'm putting it here so that we can replace it with something else if we need to. Uh, and then let's see if we have like an example of us. Yeah, here we go. So we just use our hook, like any other hook, which I've made available in uh, Peregrine, actually. So you can just import use localization from Peregrine. Um, and we have our translate function here, which we can wrap all of our different strings that we may have in that. Uh, and this just picks up what we have set in our INTNN object and translates stuff. So it's uh, very easy in theory to just go through all of our component files and wrap them like this. Uh, what else have we got? Definitely um, oh, switch store. We have a very, very simple implementation of a store switcher where I have two options here where I can choose English or French. At the minute I've hard coded it, but I would want to pull this in from a get available store views GraphQL endpoint in Magento potentially. Uh, that doesn't exist right now, so that's why it's not done, but uh, we would like to link that up to Magento. Uh, and it just, we have a handle switch uh, lang which uses our uh, localization hook. Um, so as we can see, this should translate menu connection. Uh, so now I'm in French. I have magazine par category. Uh, I can change back to English here. You can't see it in the URL, but it is actually changing my uh, localization in the URL using the locale code. Um, so that's in our routing as well, where we have um, entry points defined. So multiple locales. At the minute, again, they're hard-coded, but I, I would like to change this. Uh, James had a suggestion where we use regex to validate if something max matching that is in the URL, uh, and then we would just pass it automatically. Um, but at the minute, I can change it to FRCA, for example, and it's gonna set my language by default. So switch to French, I'm in French, my menu's in French. And then I can go back to English. Oops, if I choose the correct. Switch into English, and then I'm back in English. So it handles switching relatively simple. Um, so it also makes things like if, uh, underscore CA cart available. 
in each locale, but also without a locale defined. Uh, and what else is there? Ah, yeah, the second part would be during build, fetching um, translations from a remote server. So how that is currently looking at is we have a, um, I've created a new pass translation CLA in the um, PWA build pack area where it looks through every file in your local directory and also maybe then your UI and looks for anything wrapped in a translation string. Um, and then So what this is going to do is it's going to look through all of my um, package file, all of my files, and it's going to extract anything I have as a string defined. And then the next step would be go to a GraphQL endpoint, which I created, where you pass in phrases, a locale, and it returns you the translated strings as required. And then we would build that out to our, say, remote JSON file which would be our local one, which would be um, generated automatically by the trans, uh, pass translations function in the CLI build process. Okay, that was a lot of information. I'm sorry, I spoke and probably rushed through a lot of it, um, but that's sort of an overview of the concept I had, um, and I would love uh, feedback. It is still a work in progress, obviously. That's really cool, uh, Chris. Yeah. Can we? Um, where can we see some of this code? Uh, is this in like a private repo you've got? At the minute, I haven't pushed it to the repo. It's a public repo. Uh, I can push it by end of day to see, uh, so you can see what uh, state I'm in. I really wanted to clean some stuff up before I pushed it anywhere, um, but I had a, a good effort with one of the other guys from absolutely that last night, um, Dan, where we went through and we cleaned up a lot of this and we pretty much implemented the entire hook um, properly last night uh, and got it into a better state. Well, it looks neat. I'd love to look at the code. Um, ping me, this is Steven, uh, Steven Root. Ping me on the public Slack if you, whenever you do that. Okay, no problem. Yeah, actually, if we can, so there is a, there is a issue uh, that's open on the community project board. It's issue 669 where there's been a lot of dialogue, obviously on internationalization. So if we can get an update uh, pointing to you know whatever resource of the code, uh, assuming it's uh, we want to make it publicly available, uh, then that'd be a great place to post. For sure, we'll do. I just have tags like absolute net, so I can search for where I've modified stuff in core. So I'll just like clean up some of that stuff, and I'll get a um, a branch off uh, by end of day. Hey, really quick, um, that uh, GraphQL endpoint was that. Um intended to be like interfacing with Magento, so like existing translations in like a Magento core system, you could retrieve those remotely? Was that the intention exactly. of that? Exactly, yeah, yeah. So okay. it just, it, the parse translations grabs any string that you've defined, so it could be in Venue UI or Venue Concept, but if you're using a string that is in Magento, like a common string like add to card or my account or something like that, if it exists in Magento and it exists for the locale that you send it, it's going to return you the translated strings and automatically build for each locale those remote JSON files. So you don't need to necessarily define all of your translations in PWA and in Magento. You could leverage a Magento language pack, uh, yeah, with like little to no work. Uh, that is awesome. I think that little piece by itself, yeah, we should we should loop that into the GraphQL team if that is like a kind of that a, a slick little endpoint to get translations out of Magento. Um, yeah, it was a really, pretty, really pretty quick endpoint to put in. Um, I'd have to submit a PR, PR request to the GraphQL team, but that was the plan. Cool. Yeah, it is really cool. And that that's what I was gonna ask, uh, Tommy. We talked about this uh, a little bit, but I wanted to know a little bit more of your vision 
or how this will work for your customers and your clients and what you would explain to them as a kind of a business process. Here are your translations. Here's what we've done for you. Here's how you would update them day to day. Um, and you don't have to be you know, very detailed about that, but I think it would help folks on this call understand um, the extra value that we've given to merchants um, by doing this this way that you've done where you can fetch the translations from the back end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the goal would be to leverage any existing language packs available or things like that. Um, but also yeah. leveraging nat the native functionality of Magento 2 to do custom translations and things like that. This loads everything you have defined, whether it's in a uh, language pack CSV file or if it's in the database as a defined translation. So is the idea that this would be fairly seamless and the merchant would be able to do translating and managing of localizations the exact same way in the PWA as they do uh, currently in Magento? Uh, yeah, pretty much. We tried to make it as simple as possible. The great thing about it's... the GraphQL store view is that all the product data is just fetched from the correct store view with the translations, obviously, so there's no work there. Yeah. And content does the same. Oh, that's a little, one other thing I wanted to show. My bad. Uh, local storage. So the URL resolver cache uh, mm -hmm. did not support multiple store views, so I'm just doing a URL resolver uh. cache per, per store view. So that's one thing you got to keep in mind because slash home, for example, or the base route resolves to a different CMS page uh, in the back end depending yeah. on the header. So just adding um, that cache in there to call the correct like. CMS page ID for different routes in different stories. So that was the only other Understood. thing. Understood. Awesome. We got any other questions uh, on the line for Chris? Awesome. Well, thanks, Chris. Uh, we'll definitely uh, have some follow up here. Uh, I, like I said uh, earlier, we have an issue that's on the board that we've been tracking and there, there has been conversation back and forth about internationalization. We obviously need to work with Chris to uh, get the two things linked up, the code and the issue, and then um, see how we move things forward uh, alongside the core team here. Um, but obviously this is a uh, you know, huge value for us for the entire uh, project. Uh, it obviously accelerates our roadmap because we didn't have an international, uh, internationalization epic on the, on the board until probably later in Q3. So. Um, uh, we love to see, uh, you know, this type of involvement from our members of the community and it, it's huge for us. Um, so thank you again. No problem. Thanks for letting me show it off. All right. Well, uh, Jordan, unless you have anything else for Community Corner. Um, nope. That was it. Okay. So remember that uh, we have the community uh, uh, project in GitHub uh, for issues that you can take a look at on, on, on uh, if you want to contribute. We know right now that uh, obviously there's a lot going on in the world. Uh, asking people to not only focus to focus on our project and focus on contribution is is probably a lot given everyone's focus on their day job and their lives. But uh, we definitely appreciate all of you guys for being involved. Um, you know, if you happen to have an issue that you picked up or, or plan to pick up an issue and you can't get back around to it, make sure you just let us know and we're happy to, to pick up where anybody has left off. We're happy to get any, help get anything across the finish line uh, and in terms of code review or, or further development. Um, so uh, I think it's important to say that. Uh, and if you have questions on, on anything on the board or wanting to pick something up, make sure you reach out to Jordan, uh, Tommy, who you can see there on the call, or myself. Um, Anything else from any? Oh, yeah. Whoa, we've got Tommy. With oh one more boy, demo. we've got Tommy with one more demo. I was about to. All right. Oh no, I I don't want to end on a, a low note. <laughs> what? Well, well, uh, you you can kidding. just project. Use a higher register. You'll be good. <laughs> uh, all right. Let me see. Can I do this all in Chrome? What does this change? Yeah, I'll do this all in Chrome. Uh, okay. Sure, so uh, this. What's that? Oh, nice thank shirt. you. I, I didn't realize how crazy it was going to be on the, the blue jeans. I mean, it's like I'm um, kind of like just floating here in the air. Uh, or maybe that's just my terrible monitor. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm kind of going to end on a uh, technical note. Can everybody see my screen? Uh,
uh, so it's mm -hmm. a paragraph too long. Uh, so we added another new section in the wiki here um, and kind of started um, doing some, some code hygiene, refactoring things to kind of some new standards that we're trying to live by. Um, one of those things is kind of the the number one problem in programming is like naming things and um, where to co-locate them. Uh, so we've made a decision uh, in the scope of GraphQL um, where uh, we will split up operations in like a component.graphql.js file. So this is going to be uh, GraphQL tags inside of a JS file. Um, and those will be compiled by um, web pack at build time and then we also decided to separate fragments from those operations um, this ended up being an, an odd an odd reason uh, with cyclical dependencies um, that I won't get into here uh, but for for your enjoyment fragments and operations separate files co-located with the components themselves um, and then this is going to tie into some um just kind of some some neat stuff oh not that one uh i'm gonna go do develop like some caches um so uh one of the refactors we did to kind of demonstrate this um hardly prepared here um the pr merged recently Uh, just related to cleaning up um, how the Apollo cache is updated during certain mutations throughout the system. So a mutation would be like adding something to a cart, uh, removing something, editing something, checking out, logging in, all those fun things. Um, so one of the things, um, or one of like the low hanging fruit proof of concept things we could do was mess with cart trigger. So cart trigger, um, I'll bump that up. Cart trigger is one of those things that has uh, been on the page forever. Uh, it was using some old Redux actions to uh, get its data. Um, and it actually turned out to be very important that uh, it ends up being what initializes the cart on your first page load. Um, so a very important component there. And we thought it would be uh, a first easy thing to change. So uh, you'll see here in the scope of this refactor, uh, we're going to start following this new pattern here. Um, so it's very clear when you're handing off mutations and queries to Talon uh, that they all kind of have this same um, signature that you can expect. Um, so you'll start seeing us kind of break um, mutations and query operations into their own uh, little set and then um, easily know how to like override them and extend those uh, when you are making use of these, uh, those talents in your own custom code. Um, so outside of that, um, I think that actually pretty much covers it. So um, to kind of loop this all in uh, to the community as well, um, we do have a new issue that we added to the board where if you are interested in kind of getting comfortable with GraphQL and want to, to get um, familiar with how uh, PWA leverages GraphQL, uh, we have an issue in our community backlog, which as a quick reminder, you go to projects, community backlog, and look at our issues here. Uh, we have this uh, issue that I'll be updating shortly uh, where we'll be asking for some help going from our old pattern where we co-located everything in this queries directory uh, to this new and beautiful pattern, which we've demonstrated here in this PR, um, kind of how that should behave and function. Um, and then uh, kind of to tie into the why, um, so this does some nice things before we were doing some, um, we we're always checking the network on the cart page. Um, so cart page is this kind of um, new experience that we're doing on the desktop. And whenever you went there, you'd always get like a flash of like, I, I need to go fetch my data. Um, but now you'll see that there's no flash and kind of any, anything that you do anywhere in the app will automatically update the cache. And that cart page can just automatically render. It doesn't need to check the network because it knows what it has in the cache is like up to date and it can be trusted. So if we go back to cart page, 
you'll see it just automatically renders. I don't have to do anything. Um, I think we, we plan on like removing this, but uh, like anywhere in the application now where you mess with like cart data, it also automatically updates. So you'll see there, even though I was interacting with the uh, mini cart, you'll see that that page that wasn't even in active view behind it detected that it's cache changed and automatically re-rendered. So kind of just continuing on that theme of leveraging Apollo as best we can. Um, and then looping this into like community contributions where if you want to learn best practices on how we are using Apollo and GraphQL, um, come on over. We'd love to, to walk you through it and help us improve uh, our, our code base at the same time. Um, so I think that's it. Any questions? I kind of ran through a bunch of different things there. Thanks, Tommy. No problem. Thank you very much, man. All right. So, uh, yeah, we'll take another quick pause for questions, comments, uh, general commentary from anybody that's on the line. All right. Well, that is it for today's meeting. So we will catch you guys uh, again next week. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, onwards and upwards, uh, the recording has ended. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Uh, don't forget to smash like and subscribe. Honk if you like it. Uh, and please wash your hands. <laughs> nice. There we go. Red Heart, don't, touch face. Face. don't touch your face. Don't touch your face. Wash your phone. Wash your, wash your phone. Alcohol wipe. All right. See you guys. Thanks, everyone. Everybody.